Hello, welcome back to Learning Curves. I finished, I finished. No one ever thought this day would come. Practically from the moment we bought this house, I wanted to paint the kitchen backsplash. While we do appreciate a lot of the unique choices in the home, there are more unique choices than we would have made. The previous owners had very bold tastes and were brave, where they were very brave. While I have been very eager to retain some of that uniqueness and individuality of the home, I still wanna put my own stamp on it and make it our home with my tastes, our tastes, our tastes. But like his tastes are action movies and football and Batman, which has a place in the home, just not every place in the home. I digress. The kitchen backsplash had a lot of colors in it and different shapes. So pretty early on, I thought that painting would be a way for us to maintain that unique shape pattern without keeping all of those colors. So I set out to paint it. I did a little Googling, a little research, and Rust-Oleum has a tub and tile kit that has fantastic reviews. And a lot of people use it in you know, dated bathrooms with like a tan or beige tub. Is that different? I don't know. I bought two kits. Instructions on the kit are pretty involved. Actually, the instructions on the box aren't as involved as the video. If you look on any website where they sell it, there's like a three minute video that tells you how to use it. Or if you watch any videos of other people who are, hey, you are watching a video of other people who have used the product. Full circle. If you watch any other videos, you will see that there are so many prep steps. So I made a long list of the prep steps. I cleared the embarrassingly cluttered counters. Then I took off all the outlet covers. I taped over the outlet covers. I did wash the tiles. I felt like the bleach and lime away steps were more for a bathroom where there might be mildew or mold buildup. Moving down the list, the next part was make repairs. Time wasted, you'll see why. I used DAP spackle, I swear to you that I looked up what you should fill any imperfections with in grout or tiles. I saw a Rust-Oleum representative that said use some kind of spackle. I did find one in my research for this video that said use a patching compound similar to liquid steel. I swear it did not say liquid steel. We had used DAP to fill all the nail holes from the renovation that we had last year. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm I'm thinking that maybe that wouldn't have worked as far as painting over it. It didn't end up mattering. Again, you'll see. It said to clean with an abrasive cleaner. So I put a little baking soda on a sponge and that worked well enough. Then I tried to remove the caulk and that was kind of a joke. I later learned that there was about a quarter inch gap between the countertop and the bottom of the tile. So I think most of the caulk was in that gap. So it was really hard for me to get under slash behind it to pull it out. I ended up later being able to kind of get a screwdriver behind it and that kind of helped me pull it out in addition to sort of scraping the bottom. But since the tiles were so small, scraping around the top with like a razor or something, the razor would, it, it just didn't work. I pretty much just scraped around the countertops and dug behind it and then pulled in a way that I was hoping that the caulk would stay in one piece and not rip and then it, that wasn't too bad. And then the next step was sanding and like, look, how, look how happy she looks. She thinks that she's almost finished. She is not. As I'm sanding, the grout is continuing to fall out and a lot of red dust is coming away very easily, like very chalky, chalky, chalky. This is when I started to get really concerned that as I was painting, the brush or roller would pick up some of that red dust from the, the grout lines and turn the white paint pink. So I called the Rust-Oleum helpline. I saw some comments on one of the reviews that said they were really helpful. The person I talked with was not especially helpful. They told me that I shouldn't have used DAP. And I was like, a commenter from Rust-Oleum said I should. <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, maybe it'll work. And I was like, okay, is there something that I can put on there to seal the grout lines or, and they were like, oh, it won't cover that. It won't cover that. No, no, I don't think there's anything. I was like, come on. I was frustrated. So I thought about it for a while, ended up calling the contractor who had helped with our upstairs renovation. He was like, it's coming out anyway, right? Like you're gonna need to re-grout. And I said, yes. And he's like, I would just de-grout and regrout, and then put a coat of kills on it and then paint. So I made an entire other video about the degrouting and regrouting and the comedy of errors that that was within the comedy of errors that painting the kitchen was, <laughs> the backsplash. It really, it's like a uh, fractal, what are they called fractals? Suffice it to say that degrouting was so messy, but I was happy to have those experiences. And after I regrouted, I felt a lot more confident 
again naively, that the red would be gone and then I'd be fine. I figured I could skip the degreasing steps, you know, as I started over in preparing to paint. I did tack cloth, but that felt like a waste of time because it just kept getting stuck on the sand in the power grout. Also, there wasn't really much of anything red coming up on the tack cloth and I was over it. So I stopped tack clothing. I then went back and I painted a coat of kills over all of it. We had some kills left over from when we painted our renovation. I'll link that video. But I was pretty surprised with how much the kills already coated the tile and I was really happy already starting to see some lightening of the backsplash. And I figured that one coat would be enough. I felt like it was a thick enough coat to seal the red grout. I thought we'd be okay. I think I should have done another coat, but I didn't. I proceeded with the paint. Maybe don't paint on the night that the Steelers play Monday Night Football. And when your husband is such a big Steelers fan that he has a tattoo and he needs to watch the kids. Oh, didn't go great. So it's a two-part epoxy. There's a large can and a small can. You mix each of those separately really well, and then you pour the small can into the large can and mix that for two minutes. I recommend pouring confidently. I was scared. Because of that, I spilled a lot of the stuff from the little can in my first batch. I don't think that was a problem with adhesion, but it was a problem with mess. Pour with confidence. So I started painting. A tip that I learned is to take painter's tape over your roller, like with the sticky part over the roller, so that it pulls off as much fuzz as possible. I had a two pack of rollers. The first one in the pack worked great and hardly had any lint come off. The second one had so much lint come off and it was so frustrating. Anyway, the first coat went on pretty well. You're supposed to put on your first coat, wait an hour, and then if needed, put on a second coat, wait an hour, take off the tape. It stinks. It's an acrylic epoxy. It smells very, very, very strongly. Like I remember reading reviews where people were like, I love the smell of gasoline. This was intense. You absolutely have to wear a mask. Definitely open windows. Definitely get a fan going. Our kitchen doesn't actually have a lot of windows. What ended up happening is the fumes, even though we had a fan at the entrance to the kitchen, like between the hallway and the kitchen, blowing into the kitchen, the fumes ended up going past the fan and up the stairwell and upstairs smelled so much more strongly than downstairs and that's where everyone sleeps and I did this at night so we kept the doors to the bedrooms closed so the smell really just collected in the hallway I was impressed with the coverage it already was like boom pretty white with the second coach I really didn't see that much of a difference again because that first coat was so thick the biggest thing I recommend for that second coat is to really pay attention to when you started you're supposed to peel the tape off an hour after you start painting your last coat. About two thirds of the way through that second coat, I ran out of epoxy and it was taking me longer to like really try and make it stretch. And it takes some time to mix the second kit, to mix each kit. So there was kind of a space there. <sighs> Does anybody else have trouble with painter's tape? I hate painter's tape. If you watch that video of us painting a renovation, you'll see part of why, but the same thing happened here. I tried to peel up the paint as soon as I felt like I could. And still there were areas where it kind of pulled the epoxy away. I mean, the epoxy formed a layer kind of like really thick nail polish, you know, that you could like peel off. It was kind of like that where it was peeling up. So I just sort of pressed it down because it was towards the bottom. And I hoped that when I caulked over it, it would cover it. And it did work for the most part. But I mean, that's the whole thing with this paint is the durability is supposed to be really high if you prep correctly. So I didn't love that pulling up the painter's tape meant that the paint was coming up too. Maybe I got a bad batch of painter's tape. We spend a lot of money on it on purpose. Oh. So as I'm waiting that hour after the second coat, I started noticing pink. I started noticing pink, especially on the banner and a few places around the bottom in the corners. And there are these square tiles that were red behind the sink, like behind the faucet. They had some like sunflowers on there in the center part of the sunflower where there was black, you could see that ring on both the tiles. It seemed like the longer the paint sat on the tile, it seemed like it, saturated any red grout behind the paint and soaked it up into it. My husband was like, how does it feel to be finished? Cause it really felt like it was never gonna end. After I painted, I mean, all that's left to do is put the outlet covers back on and caulk. So he was like, how's it feel? And I was like, I was just, I was so, I was so dejected. I put in all that time and effort to get it right and it still wasn't right. Do you ever have like a bestie or a sibling or somebody close to you who you like need them to tell you how you feel about something sometimes? <laughs> I needed somebody to see it in person because it, it doesn't show up on camera very well. It feels like a trick of the eye. I knew my husband and my mom were both gonna be worthless. They were both gonna be like, you're done, just stop, just stop, just be done. <laughs> 
And my sister, my baby sister pulls no punches. So I had her come over and look at it. And she was like, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of pink. It's fine. So she and my husband talked me into putting a few things back in like one corner or something and seeing if I notice it with some things on the counter. Not the volume of stuff we had in the beginning, <laughs> but some things. So I put back a coffee maker and the canister we keep our coffee grounds in and a little peace lily. And I still can tell that it's pink, but overall it looked so much better. I just decided to not let perfect be the enemy of good. So I put the outlet covers back on. I did have to work pretty hard to get some of that red out of especially the light switches. And then I used an old gift card and a scraper to try and get up some of the mistakes I made and areas where it got past the tape. It recommended using a plastic putty knife, but I either don't know where the one is that I have or I don't have one. And honestly, there isn't really much of a difference at that point. <laughs> Caulking? I settled on a 100% silicone caulk. I got a good quality, borrowed a good quality caulk gun. There were just a bunch of little things that were annoying. I watched so many videos where people used their finger to smooth the caulk line. You know, you have to like smooth it across the bead of caulk. Don't use your finger. Don't use your finger unless you've done this a hundred times. Use a tool. That's my recommendation. If you figure it out with your hand on the first try, very impressive. I did it with my finger. I haven't been that angry in a long time. The stuff was really sticky like tar and I kept forgetting to hit record. I had cut the hole too small because the video scared me about how big to cut it. So I was squeezing so hard and still not getting enough caulk out. And I got this, it wasn't a blister, but a sore on the meat of my palm. <laughs> Couple cool tips I saw. A lot of people say spray it with denatured alcohol. I found a really fun guy who I think is from New Zealand or something. He recommended water with a little bit of washing detergent, you know, laundry detergent, and mix it up and spray that. So you run the bead of caulk, spray it with the detergent, and then you use the caulking tool, not your finger, <laughs> to smooth the line. And then you wipe it on, they recommend a cloth or, I used paper towels and I sprayed those also with this solution. And then the other interesting tip that I saw somebody say was you're supposed to cut the tip of the caulk tube at a 45 degree angle and then that's supposed to be how you press it into your seam. You can't really tell which direction it's going. So this guy recommended drawing a line. I didn't do it, but it sounded like a good idea. <laughs> but so you can see exactly where the 45 degree angle is. So you can line up in your corner accurately. And I bet it would have saved me some time but I didn't really like the guy from the video, so I didn't do it. <laughs> the other tip I learned is to pull the caulk away quickly when you're finished, because if you pull away slowly, it like leaves this trail of caulk, but if you pull quickly, it just like breaks it, the bead off. I don't know. It didn't seem like it made sense and it seemed like there was just gonna be caulk all over the place, but stop squeezing and pull back quickly and it works. And that's it, even though it is not perfect. It is so much better. It's so much better. It's brighter. It feels cleaner. It feels bigger. It feels like a completely different vibe in the room. It feels much more like me, maybe even a little more modern. A coworker of mine said, I showed him on a video meeting that the stain of the cabinets even looked different. It looked warmer and less yellowy. Even though so much did not go to plan, I am grateful for the experiences. There's this expression that Brene Brown has. She talks about FFTs, effing first times. To oversimplify that, it just refers to how challenging first times are. When we're learning a new skill, when we're in uncharted territories, it can be really frustrating and disappointing. She recommends that we adjust our expectations, lower them. So I kind of tried to do that here. If I was going back and doing this over again, I think I wouldn't have sanded so hard and I would have, when I saw grout falling out, I would have used a patching compound more like liquid steel. I think I would have gone over it with at least two coats of kills and then painted. I think I would have skipped the degrouting and regrouting. And then I think it would have been a completely different experience because the whole reason I degrouted and regrouted was so that I wouldn't have pink tile and I still have pink tile. I mean, it's not, maybe not as much. I mean, you learn more from failing, right? Than you do from succeeding. <laughs> I'll link my video for how failing will make you a better person. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like this video and please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.